for Sullivan having to play the safety game right now. And of course he can play it really well when his mind is tuned to it, which he hasn't always been, but against Higgins, you he, he know he's going to show John Higgins every respect. Sometimes you get a sense that Ronnie actually has more respect for John and his game than the other way around, which is obviously very unusual. It's usually people in fear of Ronnie are talking Ronnie up before the game. Well, I think, uh, objectively, uh, Sullivan would, would sort of look at the other players and think there aren't that many who can do things I can't do. But Higgins has that sort of that percentage game, that tactical game that he maybe uh, feels he, he hasn't always had himself. That's probably, that. probably part of the reason why he worked with Ray Reardon. It mm. definitely added uh, that extra tactical percentage into his game. Problem here for John. Can't play any of the Reds on the left hand side and get back down the table. Okay, can't really roll into the pack of Reds. He'd leave it red into the middle. Possibly the red to the Right of the pink, are you trying to look to get safe off that? Right of the pink spot, you could maybe even run through. Yeah, that's what he's trying to do, trying to push that red through the gap. Caught it wrong and the reds clipped the other reds. So can O'Sullivan put together a substantial contribution as Higgins did in the last frame? Made a century, his first of the season against Ali Carter. As Carter was coming back at him. Well, there's the answer. Unexpected miss. It just hasn't settled at all today. Various different reasons. Trying to play that with a lot of right hand side to try and pot it and avoid the pack. But it, was, it was very close, the ball cushion is hard to get the side onto the white. That's caught, end up caught, catching it so thick. If he hasn't left John at knees, he's been quite lucky. Again, John will be well aware that chances are Ronnie won't be this distracted throughout the match. Desperate to try and capitalise, get a 
get a lead. <laughs> well, I think, Phil, would you agree he's top of the list for Dublin, isn't he, John Higgins? Unbelievable. I can't ever remember missing one. <laughs> Of course, the most famous one was that when he dropped in dead weight and then made that brilliant clearance uh, to win, win the Masters 10 9. But it hasn't been a statistic on double pot percentage yet, but it's coming. <laughs> Seven. It's also amazing, as good as he is, how bad Stephen Hendry was at doubles. Eight. So they practice a lot together. I think at some point that would have rubbed off a bit on Stephen. Well, it's got him in, and it's a significant frame this because O'Sullivan was looking to get involved with a, a break of his own. He broke down very early. We know Higgins is playing good stuff. He's just made a century in the last frame, so if he could put this one to bed, then 3 1 would be a fair reflection of what we've seen so far. Sullivan just hasn't really come to the party, he won that scrappy second frame, but it looks a bit ill at ease with everything else, with conditions and with his own game at the moment. Checking John there, I think that when he pots the back and more or less keeps the white there, what shot he'll have on the red that's closest to the left hand corner pocket. Struck that very well, John. Rest play, not one of his great strengths. This can be brilliant and everything. Plenty of two. Of course, Sullivan won his first ranking title in 93, 30 years ago now. Higgins was a year later, but John Higgins then won two more pretty quickly. He was the first player to win three as a teenager, three ranking titles. And it looked when he became world champion in 98, he was the first of the class of 92 to win it. He could potentially replace Stephen Hendry as the, the dominant force, but of course he had the other two to worry about. So the three of them all had their spells at the top. They were all world number one, they were all world champions, and they're all still there. And this is the problem players like Trump have, you know, coming along, you think he's gonna be the new dominant force, but these legends are not going anywhere. That's the problem. I suppose similar with the tennis really, the obviously Federer's finally now retired, Nadal uh, can't be too far away, and only Djokovic left where Yes, exactly. So it's not just one of them to contend with, it's the three of them. Yeah, I mean the way Trump played to beat Higgins in that final at the Crucible in twenty nineteen. As Higgins misses that out of nowhere. I was gonna say, you know, you think Higgins. Judge Trump will go on winning it. In fact, O'Sullivan's won it twice since then. But that was a miss that came absolutely out of nowhere from Higgins. And it's given a lifeline to O'Sullivan in this pre-interval frame. You can see Higgins sitting down, really frustrated. Yeah, it came out of nowhere. No rhyme or reason why he should miss it. One. Which I'm very close to red there. OK, 
again when it was John's chance, obviously John was going to be keen and determined to try and make it 3-1 and capitalise. But with that careless miss, roles reversed. And if he was to somehow win Seven. this frame run, he'd be delighted to be only 2 all, considering that John's probably played the better stuff and he's been a little bit distracted, a little bit out of sorts. Definitely, but and that's why you know one shot can t turn everything. Forty. And it'll be. I'm sure the shot Higgins thinks about the interval if it does go two each because he was starting to take control of this match. He, uh, Sullivan just lifting that red from the cushion. Obviously, John's got great mental strength, but missing that kind of red would still take. A little bit of getting over. Punch. Twenty one. Two reds below the pink, just causing a little bit of an issue. Play this red quack for blue or ball colour. Twenty-seven. And straight in the blues to play the green. I just left with the problem of trying to disturb those two reds. Ideally, you'd like to try and do it from either the pink so or the black. 31. So I tried to put it in that area. Oops. I'm obviously close to the cushion. Maybe can like a power stun, pot it and disturb them. So the eight. Just need a little bit more power playing that stun shot. You want to So the eight. Again, considering when John was Right in amongst the balls, we be happy enough to be back in contention. John just have a look at this red as a shot to nothing. Well, a very interesting moment, I think, in this match. They both had a chance to win this frame. Once we head to the interval, will Higgins get that two-frame lead? O'Sullivan 2-2 two -two will be a real result for him. He's not scored yet. He battled hard, though, again here. I'm going to be looking to put John back in trouble. Try and separate the reds here slightly. So it won't be so easy for John to, to roll onto either one of them. Again, was determined to get the white ball over the left hand side of the table, with the reds being just on the right hand side.
Just to be careful here, it doesn't catch this red too thick. Bring one or both reds out. And because of that, end up missing it all together. What is having five for? Free ball. So, free ball. John Higgins was uh, in a great position earlier in this frame. He was going along nicely. Just out of nowhere, Mr. Red to right corner. Rumble. that much better there try and give himself some shot on these reds just have a look there where's the ideal point to be on the red you know, putting the red they have the option of clipping out through the red he's going to need that one as well eight the red there for a lost ideal position in the black let's still be tempted to put the black and swing around the angles again just got to make sure if he plays that he avoids one of the other colors pot it as well it help yeah it's um it's a little concerning I think for O'Sullivan fans OK, that shot was quite intricate, but in general, he's just been scrapping, hasn't he? It's all been bits and pieces, not what you associate with him. His attitude's been good, I think. But it's not quite happening. It's not quite happening. John Higgins, you know, a few moments ago left the free ball. OK, the Reds weren't ideal where they were, but it was a definite chance for O'Sullivan to put the frame away. Higgins now with his own chance here, 17 behind. One. Should be a great frame to steal after everything that's happened. Stolen a few in his time. And yeah, 12 behind. Doesn't need the black. Five. Seven. Trying to ensure after potting the brown, just leave this up a nice angle on the blue. It's a natural angle when potting it to get down Ten. to the pink. Look, looks to be the only obstacle now. Forty. Well, it's not been so far a sort of vintage meeting between these two, but any meeting between them is fascinating. And there's been plenty of points of interest. This is the most interesting phase of the whole morning so far. Higgins needing blue and pink. If it's going to go wrong now, it's going to be this shot. did say earlier, you know, with the rest, he's not necessarily top of the list. What a chance that was. He was on the pink as well. So the drama continues. Yeah, obviously furious there. See, throwing the extension down. <laughs> that miss, though, just gives this frame extra significance. 
Well, Higgins has had two really good chances to win it. So O'Sullivan needs blue and pink. That's what Higgins needed. One good pot here needed for O'Sullivan. And that's not it. And that was not particularly close, you've got to say. Yeah, he's surprised, not surprised he's having a look at the double. The only thing is, there's no cover in playing it. And those shots probably has to go in. <laughs> Feel one good pot here for Ronnie. Feel the screw back for the pink. He's not waving to family, by the way. He's obviously trying to keep people still in the eye line of the players. Because this is such a vital moment in the match today. Been a hatful of opportunities on both sides, chances to get the frame one already. I feel it's a more important frame for Ronnie to win. So if it's too old, John's still level. Of course, he's going to be frustrated. He knows he should have been three and up. But Ronnie doesn't really want to fall through and behind to John, particularly when he's not quite at his best. Tempted by the pot, is he? <laughs> Try. Has it been fortunate? Yeah. <laughs> John's face. Tell the story. on the side cushion, maybe get a snooker behind the black. Fairly standard shot left, safety shot left here for John, like twice across, leave the blue around about the black spot, the white back of the table, might even chance of a snooker. Played it very well. Played with a tracer right hand side to bring the white over closer to the black. And a great response by Ronnie there. Perfect contact on the blue. Push it over to the side cushion and get the white back down the table. Might well see a series of fantastic safety shots coming up between the pair of them. Expected him shutting up there from Ronnie. Does not want this in. A bit close for comfort. See that 
chance to tip quite away from the white ball at address. for John. Not really sure you're going to play dead weight to hold for the pink. One does hit a bit harder to try and pot it. And leave yourself some shot on the pink. Again, because it just needs blue and pink. Get the play of dead weight. Five. Yeah, couldn't have played it much slower. Well, you just knew it wouldn't be an easy pot on the pink because it's not been an easy frame. And this pink with the extension and the rest, a lot more difficult than the blue he missed. But again, it is just a shot to nothing. He can play it freely, cue it freely. Knows the white's gone back up the table. Well, he's had a lot of chances already. They both had chances in this frame. Can John Higgins knock the pink in to lead by two at the interval? John Higgins, five. Now, cue it across it there. Actually got a little bit of side and just turned it over. Try there for running, play the back double. Not the easiest of safety shots here for John. I'll just try and dump it on the side cushion. Yeah, that was always the danger. Didn't quite have the angle to play the up and down. You always felt the balls were going to spread apart. Usually for Ronnie, you just feel it, if it's a bit difficult, you actually don't really expect him to pot it. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't easy, that, but it's quite humbling in a way. You know, these two all-time greats of the game struggling a bit today. It shows you how hard Snooker actually is. Yeah, it's great to see. <laughs> yeah. Excellent safety shot there. Does the pace very well. Yeah, top of the table from Ronnie. We appreciated that. What I've liked as well, there's been no sort of false apologising. They've had a little bit of luck here and there, but it's just, they, they know that's all part of it. They've played it long enough to know that's just part of the game. Great shot there. Very small margin for error there. Could have easily double kissed it. And then to, trying to avoid the double kiss, you could catch it too thin and leave it on. Waiting for one of them to blink here. Opportunity here for Ronnie. Not just obviously to put up with the white up, of course, going naturally back down the table towards the black. It's these kind of shots he has been missing today. Well, Higgins just needs the pink. He's had a go at it already, of course, with the extended rest. 
He's had a lot of chances already at the blue earlier. He was in early in the frame. Can he finally put it away for a 3-1 lead? No, he cannot. But it's going to be the snooker. Yeah, play the percentage shot. Difficult to hit and not leave it on. Fascinating exchange between the pair of them. Snooker brains going toe to toe. <coughs> Might be able to put the pink on the side cushion, play it slowly. Might even get some cover behind the black. there. The crowd living every moment of this extraordinary exchange between these two legends. Foul, enemies. Well, what that changes, of course, is now Sullivan only needs the ping. Higgins back to needing pink and black. He's had so many... Uh, times in the frame where he looked like he was going to win it but it's very much in the balance again yeah there's a difficult difficult escape here of course not just to hit it chance are it just looks well as kind of even if you did hit it you're more likely to leave it on than not Of course, from distance, playing a swear, very hard to judge exactly the pace and the exact contact on the pink. I'm just relieved to get any contact and try not leave a pot on. Seems to get more s swerve on it this time. Again, another chance for Ronnie. Needs one good pot. He's had, a, he's had a few goes as well at putting the frame away. Can he knock this in? He'd be delighted with 2-2. Two, two. Oh! And in it goes. What a battle that was between these two all-time greats. John Higgins had a lot of chances himself to win that frame and take a 3-1 advantage. But O'Sullivan, who's not been at his best, has got to the interval on level terms. 2-2. Two, two. First to six to reach the semi-finals restart of uh, what's been an interesting match it hasn't sort of there's been no fireworks yet but that last uh, battle on the blue and the pink very interesting between Ronnie O'Sullivan and John Higgins 2-2 two, two. so set up nicely O'Sullivan potted the pink in the end all he needed in that fourth frame to level up and he'd be delighted he's not made any breaks to speak of yet but he's very much in contention table two they're back underway there. Mark Selby leading Judd Trump 3-1. Trump won the first frame. Selby's won the next three, all with breaks. He's missed that green, though. It's live on Discovery Plus as O'Sullivan and Higgins return. Well, John Higgins had sundry chances you've got to say to win that fourth frame i think uh, objectively he played the better snook of the two pre-interval but the fact is it's two each and sullivan will be delighted and now he'll be looking to improve i think he will feel he'll have to to win but let's see if he can find something Three higgins five. has had a century it's been very interesting even if it's not been the highest quality match they've ever played so far that can change Yeah, 
Yeah, we've had better matches during this tournament already. There's definitely been better matches between these pairs as well, but it's, that's not to say we won't improve a lot. Certainly, I'd say Ronnie would be delighted to be being two all. If it was a younger, more experienced player, you might think they'd maybe slightly missed the boat by not being three and up. Of course, John, with his experience and mentality, still be at all no surprise if he won and still won well. Uh, Sullivan, though, kept his focus, didn't he? You know, he didn't sort of throw his cue at anything. He, he, he was um, struggling a little, but he, his focus was good. And that was, to a large degree, why he won that frame in the end. Potted a good pink. Ronnie there, rather than play off the pack thick, played it with a tracer left-hand side. Just caught the reds a little bit thinner, trying to keep the pack together and let the side do the work. Bigger of eight safety shot there with John. Try, was trying to get it behind the yellow. Ronnie might try and play something similar. And do, bring it over to the other side. Both players looking to gain advantage, looking to play a telling safety shot, trying to force a mistake from their opponent. Again, Ronnie deliberately playing over to trace the side to try and bring the white ball over to the other side of the table. Dodged a bullet there, didn't he? Could easily have caught one of those reds. The white just sort of serenely made it through the middle of the melee. I think the red beside the blue is possible for Ronnie. Again, not easy. And certainly the kind of shot he has been missing today. He won't always miss them. <laughs> Red can pass the other red. Seven. Have much of the pocket to play with there. Hit it very well though. It's just, just check standing there, Ronnie, just waiting to 14. see will the black go into the left hand corner pocket. Just a bit when far enough there. Looked like it came quite fast off the second cushion, more than he expected. We're looking here to get a better angle on the back so we'll be able to pot the black and go into the pack. And then he'll have a choice of reds into either corner Plenty pocket.
Ron O'Sullivan. 22. It's kind of been the story, hasn't it, for O'Sullivan today? He's been getting into these positions and then just the odd miss has crept in. As I say, Sullivan sort of scrambled that what pre interval frame, but in general, he would surely feel his standard has to increase to win. Higgins, meantime, has had 15 minutes just to collect his thoughts. He has made a century, of course. Eight. Yeah, nice shot there. Played it with strong left hand side. Try and come back parallel with this black here. Pot it, screw into them, and be on the red and the right. Got into it a little bit more than we would have liked. But more of a stun. Hit the white ball a little bit lower. That's we got a bit more reaction off the white. Difficult red into the middle down he would have liked, but again, he just has to pot it, just roll it in. It's enough to try and even hold for the blue. If you want, you can just play for ball colour. Five. Different red, but same result. Probably didn't play the red into the middle. Just a little bit betwixt and between whether to play for the blue or for the green. The other one was a bit simpler in his mind. Twenty eight. Twenty nine. Very patient break builder, John. More than happy to pick off a few blues, ball colours, and just work his way into position. Get thirty, forty on the board. Doesn't gamble too much, doesn't jeopardise. Try and get the balls open, perfect, in one shot. Just happy to keep potting, keep Super at the four. table, build the break up. Yeah, because he's very good, isn't he? If, if he goes 50-odd in front and he does break down, then just closing the shop. I mean, the shutter's just come down, actually. 35. So it's a bit of an old-school way of playing, but, of course, if he doesn't miss, then he'll be making the centuries and winning the frames in one visit. Yeah, he beat you either way. <laughs> Yeah, the beach with one visitor. Makes a 50, plays a good safety, gets back in, makes another 50. Fort. In boxing terms, he knocks you out and wins on points, and, yeah, and you haven't laid a glove on him. And of course, the other thing he's very good at, at his best, is coming back from a deficit in a frame. As Sullivan knows well, you mentioned the Masters. 2006, the decider. Forty-one. Okay, he's been doing it for so long, nearly taken for granted, but just phenomenal bottle. These two saw off a couple of venues, didn't they? That was the last ever frame played at the Wembley Conference Centre, the great venue for the Masters, and of course, the last frame ever played at the Preston Guildhall was. Ronnie O'Sullivan's thousandth century. 
Although that we do believe that's reopening. Forty-eight. Yeah, a lot of the players are working with coaches, looking to improve their games. But one thing you can teach is bottle. Forty-nine. Doing what needs to be done. Under the utmost pressure. Also in John's case, it actually never looks like he is under pressure doing it. Sixty-five. Yeah, Typical John Higgins. Patient, disciplined, professional. Seventy-two. Yeah, just needed to play a couple of recovery shots earlier on and did so. The game seems in a very good place, as I say, last season was disappointing. He started to come good towards the end of it. The Crucible, he played that terrific uh, match at the World Championship against Karen Wilson, just blew him away, but of course then the season was over. But in early season, he got within a frame of the European Masters final. Went to Leicester, qualified for the Wuhan Open, so he'll be there next month. And of course here he's already won two matches. 81. And now's a chance in this match to make his second century. He's already made four in the tournament overall, including the highest, 1-4-1. One, one. But the key thing is it's come from that O'Sullivan miss when he was in. Light. Yeah, the back end of last season. Got business in most tournaments. Again, Germany just recently lost 6-5 in the semi-final. If John Higgins keeps getting the business end of events, eventually he'll win not just one, but many. 97. So, after the scramble of frame four, a century, if this blue goes in in frame five, second of the match for Higgins. No adverse reaction at all to losing that previous frame. I guess he's too long in the two for that, really. This has been excellent. And as I say, the key thing is it came from the O'Sullivan miss. 115 with the black. John Higgins with his fifth century of the Shanghai Masters goes back in front at 3-2. He needs three more frames to reach the semi-finals. Three two to the man at the table, John Higgins here in Shanghai. Best of eleven frame quarter final with Ronnie O'Sullivan, and he's made his second century of the match. Other times it's been a bit of a struggle, but it wasn't a struggle there. The chance came, he took it really well, and it came from O'Sullivan missing a red to this right corner. <laughs> it was much easier one than that. He'd love a kiss here. One. Uh, not quite the right one. Could have been away there had he got in a bulk colour. Well, one. Forty two.
just casually bridging over left-handed. <laughs> Plays a perfect safety shot. It's amazing to think, isn't it, the fuss that was caused when he first started playing left-handed, the sort of the apparent controversy in it, because it was just a sort of new thing then, but the uh, fact is he's really good at it. And a result of that saying the other day, I wouldn't say there's a player, young player, 15, 16, who looked to be a prospect that probably can't make a 50 break with their left hand, it just becomes it's nearly a sign of weakness if you can't make a big break. Back in the day, it was deemed uh, very disrespectful. Might be a new tournament there. Players have to play with their opposite hand. I know I'd favour to win it then. He's <laughs> playing in this match. <laughs> I think left handed people can't beat him. <laughs> and break the stair and get the white back up the table. Yeah. John surprisingly gave away the initiative quite Easily there. Okay, Ronnie managed to play a very good shot. Open the reds up. Get the bike back down the tail. John probably just left a plane a dump shot, just coming down to have a look that if he leads his white down that end of the table, what will he be leaving for Ronnie? No path back. No more traditional safety. Yeah, not only has he left the red, but also I don't think the black was able to go beforehand. So now if we can just plot this, it's congested there, but just. So we'll just get it out and pass the black. I managed to do that. One. A couple of shouts have come on, Ronnie. The fans here of O'Sullivan hoping that something's going to click soon and that he can produce the sort of snooker Higgins has in terms of breaks. Because despite largely being outplayed, there's only one frame in it. So it's still very much in this match. on that red to get it away from the black spot because I knew the black would be tied up otherwise. Nine. And again, part of that just glanced at another red. The story of today really has been any time it looked like he was going to compile a break and settle down, he's either broke down or it's went awkward. Nothing's been easy for him today, but again, he sh I showed great patience and discipline, which again, in this situation, he hasn't always. 
Well, that's not even mine. Lovely, clever bit of shot. Yeah, as you say, a lot of discipline in that one. But disappointment for O'Sullivan that the break came to an end after the initial chance. You can see he's covered every red here. Yeah, I think before he started working with Steve Peters, Ronnie, as great as he was, these kind of matches when he wasn't his best against a very top player, he just didn't win them or certainly win enough of them. Again, it seems nowadays taken more as a challenge that can he win when he's not at his best. One. Well, the good safety he played has set up this second chance in the frame. desperate at some point to try and free the black. Might have to go up and down to the blue numerous times before an opportunity presents itself. Seven. As well as possible as well if he pots enough blues, he wouldn't need that red. It just makes life a lot easier. He can get the black out somehow. a little bit higher on the blue than he originally planned. As a result of that, forced him into playing the cannon. It's worked out lovely. Thirteen. Just gone a little bit too far as well. Again, playing the blue probably has to play a cannon. There's no absolute guarantee it'll go perfect. And that all came about by the previous two shots not being perfect on the blue. Well, that's about 18. Again, testament to his temperament today. I'm sure he's very frustrated from that situation to break down. But again, regrouped. Try to play as best of safety as he could. Just trying to get the white in behind the pink. another day or playing somebody else other than John Higgins his reaction might have been different but again the respect he has for John but he doesn't want to be shown any weakness at all yeah and I think also for this tournament you know it can't be a coincidence he keeps winning in Shanghai clearly it's a tournament he enjoys it's a city he enjoys he gets well looked after well rewarded for coming and wants to stay as long as he can and that's why he's digging in here and if he wins the match that would be a large part of it the fact that he's not uh, given way to any frustration. John just looking to play this red, disturb the red and the black. Straight away you can see the potential for a re rack <laughs>
cagey old stuff then. That black obviously over the pocket, the issue really. Nice glance, unintended by John there, just makes it a little bit tricky for Ronnie here. Just be careful just to catch the red on that side. But again, given with the black over the pocket and the calibre of these two players, very hard to see how either player would present with an opportunity. Maybe in playing a safety shot, if the black gets potted, it's probably the most likely. something careless for me, the player, which is very unlikely to happen. My help proceed proceedings. Is there a gap there? I think he can hit the red alright, but not enough, I don't think, to pot it. He's wondering if he hits the red on the left hand side. Could have made double kisses off the jaws and the black somehow make it. Or you maybe try and play a plant. He just feel one way or the other, this shot is going to break the impasse. Hopefully. But in, in whose favour? Well, O'Sullivan, I guess a little fortunate, really, he didn't leave the direct red. But <laughs> nothing easy on. I suppose the in-off, in a way, was a bit of a result for Higgins. Yeah, he's just not as reliable from distance right now. It's been that sort of match. It's been, yes, he's dug in, and you give him credit for that, but it's maybe taken away a bit of the natural rhythm in his game and now what a chance for Higgins here 31 behind yes but with a good chance we know he's scoring well he's made two centuries yeah Ronnie's application has been excellent just the execution today and usually it's been poor he'll be very relieved there It's not getting any easier, is it? It didn't land on the black. Maybe on the brown. Fumble. Played that well. Five. It was made a little bit harder, the fact that he knows he shouldn't have even been playing that in the first place. 
but whether you had to put the black or the brown or it's the same effect. Well, Higgins must Six. seriously fancy a chance here today because, of course, he's played O'Sullivan many times. He's beaten him many times, yes, but he's also been on the receiving end of a few hidings when O'Sullivan has just completely turned it on. That's not happened yet today. So an opportunity here for Higgins, for sure. That can create its own pressure, because chances are the next time you play Ronnie, he, he will be playing a lot better. As you said, there'll be some days where he didn't have it, even John wouldn't have had a chance of beating him. So today he's got a great chance. Doesn't want to let today's chance slip by. Four no, that's why this visit is big, I think, because he's seen O'Sullivan just struggle. That last red he took on, you know, that could have been the start of something for him, but Higgins looking to, to punish fully. And it's a good chance now where the balls are. Yeah, no, John does go four two up. Then, from what we've seen, it certainly seems unlikely that Ronnie would then have to win four one. The form has been shown, or lack of form today, that doesn't look likely at all. But when four two, probably more likely John winning six two rather than Ronnie making a comeback. Run even his chair, so looks very composed. Actually staring John every move John makes down. Twenty seven. John in his own little world. Twenty eight. So he moves in front in the frame five. and just look where the reds are. This is a serious chance now for Higgins to get to 4 2. Of course, he looked uh, good for a 3 1 lead. It didn't quite happen before the interval. 36. Deliberately left himself low on the blue, with enough okay. angle to be able to go in and out of ball. Didn't want to gamble on trying to get high on the blue, and he could end up straight. So we're at 18 ahead, it's red, give an angle on the black, and then just need the yellow thereafter. <coughs> just wants to stun it, more or less leave the white exactly where the red is, be high on the black with enough angle. Fifth. Natural standard shot now, pop the black come off the two cushions. And as it comes off the second cushion, naturally travelling towards the yellow. So this frame took a bit of time to get going. The black over the pocket, it looked like Higgins 
when they took on, tried to pop the red, had left the chance, but the in off in some ways helped because he didn't leave an easy red for O'Sullivan, he left one from distance, and O'Sullivan's not really been knocking them in today. And he left this chance, which Higgins has taken, and Snooker needed already. But surely it's his frame now, so for the first time he's going to be two in front. Concern clearly for O'Sullivan, he's not lost, remember in Shanghai since Michael Holt beat him in 2016. But he's going to have to find something today. He's going to have to find a moment of inspiration, maybe more than one, to come back here. 71. Break ends at 71, John Higgins is one. and it's got John Higgins to within two of a place in the semi-finals. He's certainly doing the scoring in this match, and he leads Ronnie O'Sullivan 4-2. TV has a perfect partner. Sky 4 Fiber Broadband now free for nine months when you take Sky TV and Netflix for £26 a month. So the cues of the two legends lying idle at the moment because Ronnie O'Sullivan and John Higgins have both left the arena after the sixth frame with John Higgins leading 4-2-71 the break. We heard a few cheers on the other side. Of course, it's Mark Selby and Judd Trump. And uh, this is Selby already 4-1 in front. Well, who doesn't love a fluke? Didn't even see it go in, but I think that's what they were roaring about. <laughs> but Mark Selby taking control there, as I say, he's uh, not had a win over Trump for a while. And 5-1. Uh, Looking like he's going to be into the semis pretty soon. He's had breaks of uh, 75, 63, 87 and 80, Mark Selby. So, you know, he's doing the scoring there. Judd Trump in deep trouble. I think the thing is when these great players play... You always sort of think it'll be close, but they're all capable of producing such a high standard that they could equally be one-sided. If one player just gets on a run, it can happen, and that's what's happened with Selby. Cross on table two. It's on live on Discovery Plus, of course. Chris Sullivan getting a bit of support as he comes back into the arena. All is not lost yet by any means, but it's just whether he can find a bit of form, a bit of scoring form. From seven, Ryan Sullivan to break. So it's 4-2 to Higgins. He's ahead by two for the first time. Running as usual, breaking off left-handed. Feels he can get more side and therefore swing the white ball around the angles better by playing it left-hand side. He's done a few times today, Ronnie. Not hitting the pack thick, playing it thin. We're using the, in this case, right-hand side, running side. 
to get the white ball back up the table. Just very fearful of catching the reds too thick, pushing the red towards either corner pocket. looking to maximise every shot he plays, particularly the safety. There's John, played a plain ball and relied on the contact on the red to try and bring the white ball over behind brown and yellow. John, and he's swinging the white ball around. John Higgins has had two centuries in a 71. Ronnie O'Sullivan's highest break is just 44. That's got to improve, hasn't it? Don't feel he's going to scrap his way through this match. Excellent shot there, bridging over. Catch it so fine. Yeah, Higgins sort of nodding his, his approval there. He has had chances, Ronnie, all right. His safety has been quite good, but as we've been saying, just hasn't scored anywhere near heavy, heavy enough to beat John or nowhere near as heavy scoring as he normally has. But again, just keep saying his patience and discipline and application have been excellent. If he keeps that attitude, it can turn around. See, does the black go into the left corner? If not, he'll probably have to pot the red, try and stun off the cushion for the pink. off straight at a slight angle but actually just hit it full on the face Be disappointed Sort of position where you you normally fancy something to happen. Where's this pink going though? Seven. You just have a look there when he puts this red to the left corner, try and leave himself an angle on the black. 
and then from there, cannon the right above it, and be on the other one into the other corner. Helps, of course. 16. Back out of the way. Here and play can on the red above to the left. Thirty six and typical Ronnie fashion, space of a couple of shots, a couple of minutes. He has the balls, lovely, great chance. Needs to mind his work. Nothing careless. Forty-four. Well, forty-five. That's gone wrong. He said that. So he has he has increased his high break, but only to forty-five. Not enough. I think he got a kick on that. Sound a little bit heavy. There's another kick there. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's. Um, Surprised John didn't get the white ball clean there. It's definitely two kicks in a row. It's just another thing that's gone wrong unexpectedly today for him. Yeah, he's battled hard, he's created the chances. But that was a classic example there. Nine out of ten times, not even in the frame in that position. Just today, this hasn't happened. But again, no motion, no petulance out of him. Just accept it as best he could. And just continue on. And again, if he ends up winning the frame in two visits rather than one, there's no harm in that. The thing is, I mean, his discipline's been excellent, but he's won a lot of matches where it, where it hasn't been. I mean, so in some of the home nations early on, you know, he'll just sort of go for everything. It's almost like he's saying to some of the lower ranked players, well, let's see if you can actually take the chances. And normally they don't. He's never lost a first round match in home nations. Here, it's the opposite. He's playing someone he really respects and he's doing everything right. But he's, at the moment, he's not getting the result. Yeah, but long term, this is, the, this is effectively the way to play. And generally those tournaments, the home nations, if in the first round he's played 13, 14 seconds. I don't think he's ever went on and won the tournament. That's actually a bad sign. Not necessarily okay, you could argue it is it disrespectful to his opponent. That's not the main issue. The main issue is Ronnie O'Sullivan, as good as he is at his best, he doesn't play at 13 or 40 seconds. And if you start off the tournament in the wrong mindset, the wrong attitude, it's nearly impossible to then turn it around. Today will be the kind of day if he could win, stand in a really good stead. Well, if he does turn it around, he's going to play Mark Selby because Selby's beaten Judd Trump 6 1. Whether he likes it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and he's finished with an 83 break, so he's had a string of breaks there, Selby. Very fluent performance from him. Higgins knocks the blue in. Yeah, so Sullivan has struggled for fluency. Mark Selby, who's you know sometimes categorised as a bit of a scrapper, has actually produced five big frame-winning breaks. Yeah, such as the standard of saying at this tournament to the players. 
to beat to Trump and maybe John Higgins is to get the final or the reverse to have to beat John Higgins and Mark Selby just, just to get to the final. Very difficult. And of course the semi-finals over two sessions. Seven. As we said earlier, if there was a player you wanted in this situation, 40 odd behind, to make a clearance at a vital stage. John's a phenomenal record at it. Yeah, you got to say, it's a good chance and could be the sort of crunch moment now in this match. Just when things were looking up for Ronnie O'Sullivan, it went wrong unexpectedly. Eighteen. Something's going to have to go wrong pretty dramatically for Higgins here. It's, n it's not about the scoreline, it's about where the balls are and everything's on. Yeah, you can't really even make a case for the red on the right-hand side being awkward. Big margin of error there, plenty of room around it. Black now, the black will actually go on the pink spot. Probably works to his advantage for that last red on the right hand side. Be a nice angle to be able to put the black and just fall in behind the red into either middle pocket. Satisfied. Like the white to travel a little bit more over towards the left hand side. Okay. So likely he missed the pink. Just he's going to be going away from where the last red will be. Just to be careful he doesn't over screw it, block himself with the pink. Just leave it low. Okay, just to be a little bit careful here. Going in and out of bog. Doesn't it one of the colours? Then needs to get on a colour with an angle then to be able to get onto the last red. Loved an angle, I think it might be straight. If he's straight, all he can do is screw back. That tells you there, he does have a slight angle. Depending on the angle, stun over to that red. Be able to play it into the right hand middle. It looks to be very straight. He's just going to be careful, he definitely pots it. There's a tense, he can push this to the left hand jaw. Use that side of the pocket to force an angle over. From there, probably play this as well as he can. Forty-seven. Well, you sort of feel this could be last chance saloon in this frame for O'Sullivan. A tricky little red. Ideally, would like to play it pocket weight, but of course, if he does that, the white will be on the side cushion.
48. Probably played that way, hoping he's left himself a natural angle on the pink to pot it. Possible here in potting as he might hit the yellow. Play that well, managed to avoid the cannon on the yellow. Fifth to four. And you can feel one good pot here, stood around off two cushions and have the green back in the same pocket. Well, we've literally lost count of the amount of times John Higgins has done this, stepped in behind in a frame and made a, a great clearance. This hasn't been absolutely straightforward, but 11 in front. He will need the blue. <coughs> I think if he stuns the white and leaves the white on the green spot, he naturally has the angle. 59. So I had to go the other way, but this looks harder. Less guaranteed position. Just to power it and get back down for the blue. Six to three. <laughs> Played it very well. At the moment, O'Sullivan could tie, but the blue will get Higgins' his full attention here. It's all he needs for a 5 2 lead. Just one away from the semi finals. He's done it again. He's cleared up again. Quite incredible. O'Sullivan was looking good. He'd made his highest break of the match, only 45, but he was banging. It went wrong. And Higgins has stepped in once again. Another very impressive break, that from the four times world champion, John Higgins, a 74. And he's on the brink now of victory here. Just one more needed, and he'll be taking on Mark Selby in the semis. Right now, UNICEF is supporting millions of children in emergencies around the world. It's what they do. Teams are bringing medical supplies for children in Yemen, clean water and medicines in Afghanistan, healthcare and safe spaces for Ukraine's children. To find out how you can help, search UNICEF supplies online or text supplies to 84988. 32 pounds could help provide a health worker with a large first aid kit. Supplies that start out here in the world's largest humanitarian warehouse. Make sure children keep learning, keep playing and keep safe. When their world is turned upside down, vital support from you will help make sure life-saving supplies like these can reach children whenever they need them. Search UNICEF supplies now or text supplies to 84988 because your support brings hope for children caught in crisis. John Higgins on the brink here, 5-2. He's made the key breaks in this match. He's one away from the semi-finals. Mark Selby's beaten Judd Trump 6-1 on the other table. So we'll play the winner of this match tomorrow in a best of 19. And of course, still to come later, we've got Neil Robertson against Fang Zhengyi and Luca Purcell against Robert Milkins.
play that very well. Thin clip with a trace aside to bring her back over behind in that line behind the yellow. So the match uh, that we'll be bringing you later will be the Luca Brassell Robert Milkins match, but of course you can watch Neil Robertson and Fang Zhang Yi on Discovery Plus. Oh, terrific pot, John Higgins may be in for the kill here. The last clearance was typical of John Higgins. It'll also be typical of him. First chance to make a big break. There's one characteristic of the top players is that when a chance, they take it and sprint over the line. Eight. Not only do they make the big break, they look like they're going to make the big break. Nine. Well, Ronnie O'Sullivan's won 15 successive matches in Shanghai. Is that run about to end here? It's been a disappointing performance from him. He struggled with conditions. He never got going in terms of the sort of fluency we associate more 16. with him than anyone. And it's just a question of whether he now gets another chance to even start to put that right. There'll be plenty of times though during the season Ronnie would obviously he's playing very well at his best. And actually if he has the attitude he's had today, he'd be very, very hard to beat. As I said his application has been excellent. Seventeen. But his execution of shots for him has been quite poor. No, that's absolutely right. He couldn't have tried any harder. It just hasn't worked. And his snooker is a hard game and sometimes no matter how good you are it just doesn't happen for you john higgins though on the other hand he has scored well obviously lost that fourth frame which was a blow but didn't affect him he's had two centuries a couple of 70s 25 and hoping that this will be another substantial break that gets him over the line to take on mark selby who of course has, he's had many battles with they played in the world championship quarterfinals at the end of last season that was a top old match selby won 13-7 but so that players championship we mentioned earlier that he won in 2021 of course he beat mark selby there six nil and selby scores seven points in the match so higgins has certainly had his moments against him yeah it's a phenomenal performance i think that's probably the greatest snooker we've seen in a sustained period like for a week here of course picking off these open reds but also getting them with blacks so again firstly wants to win the win the frame in the match but in the process of doing that the possibility of 147 is not un totally unrealistic okay, there's four reds out in the open 41. there obviously four reds four backs to make 72 ahead with 75 so even to win them frame we will need to disturb them might take that chance here a sort of wry look on his face he may not stay in the black because winning the match is the key thing yeah maximums can wait they've had 27 between them just the 27. <clears throat> yeah, a little bit careless there from John. Probably a little bit distracted. The fact he wasn't going for the 147. 
just to be a little bit careful if he does play the blue. So instead he's gone for the green, just come down, play for an area. If he plays for an area, he should have a choice of three or four reds. Very uncharacteristic from John. Again, from the green, he fully expected he'd be on one of the reds. But again, the problem started with the red to blue. And again, probably, as I said, just got a little bit distracted or lost concentration because the 147 chance had gone. Well, the balls were at his mercy. He'll be really sick there. And 52. the match not done yet. It looked over. 52 the lead. Put that Marty decided to go for it. Position not guaranteed at all off this red. I would try and just make sure of it and get the white ball out in the middle of the table and have some shot probably on the blue. Yeah, I knew it couldn't really get high on the blue, just One. made sure of the pot. the ball, stay at the table, build up the points. Very good at that, John. Never jeopardises the pot for perfect position. More than happy to take two, three, four shots before he gets Six. ideal position. But more determined to pot the ball, keep at the table, keep in control. And again, one good pot here. Should be enough for the match. It's three of those kind of shots that have six. literally just been off straight, and all three of them he's hit full in the face. Yes, and it's true to say as well, in the last couple of years, he has struggled to kill a few matches off, particularly a couple of finals. He's had two chances to win this one. Got a little fortunate, really, where the white finished. It's also tied up green and brown, which doesn't favour O'Sullivan, 58 behind. One. You can hear the cheers, though, from the fans there. I think a lot of them thought it was over. Not yet. Yeah. Great pop by Ronnie there. Again, probably delighted and surprised Six. to even have this chance. I don't think he'd read it as a sign of weakness from John that he hasn't capitalised it. Still a lot of work to do. Sometimes these kind of chances are a little bit easier in the fact that if you've written the frame and match off, a little bit more fluent, a little bit more positive. 15. Feel like you've nothing to lose. But again, to all you can best you can probably hope for is get right back into the game. This is certainly missable, particularly if he tries to Can't play it and get out perfect on the black. I think he's going to put the next two reds in colours. Of course, leaves a problem the last red. Then, of course, further down the road. So, the green and brown. But worst case scenario, even if he could, couldn't disturb the green and brown, if he was to get that far and play the first telling safety on the green, you don't have to win so it in one won. visit. This is the most relaxed he's looked all day because he thought it was over. This is sort of a, just a bonus chance that's come along. But if he can somehow win this frame, then it really makes Higgins so think about it. his own mistakes. 
Let's set it eight. Forty-four. Running on Sunday in forty-four. I'd actually have the angle here if he runs through to disturb the brown and green. Uh, vermelha está ao lado da bola preta. Coisa é certa, a vida já esteve melhor para os coceres. E Ronnie pode aqui fechar as contas da nona partida. Sim, vai precisar de uma boa colocação e, e não sei se joga com a bola azul ou se joga com uma das bolas do, do D para trazer a banca para baixo. Excepcional. Atenção só. Uf. 22 pontos de vantagem, 23 com a bola vermelha. E agora bola rosa, bola preta ou até a bola azul servem para bola de, de jogo e para Ronnie O'Sullivan manter aqui viva a chama acesa aqui para as meias finais. Selby já lá está. Convém, convém que a bola amarela caia. Caso contrário, John Higgins regressará. Nineteen. Twenty three. E está o cinco quatro e temos jogo. Ambos por uh, 11-9. Ronnie O'Sullivan e John Higgins regressam. Trinta e um anos a defrontarem, a defrontarem-se, a esgrimirem argumentos no Pano Verde. E também é a primeira vez que abre e deixa a bola. E claro, Ronnie O'Sullivan não, 
não desperdiça. Talvez tenha ali um pequeno ângulo de saída, cá está. Não está completamente direta. Parece que começa a virar o encontro por completo. Something. Excepcional a colocação da vermelha para a bola preta para o mesmo buraco. uma vermelha que passa para o canto inferior esquerdo. Vamos ver se com o ângulo certo ou não, se não terá que puxar a branca para, para a bola azul. 37. E tudo bem feito. Agora sim, dono e senhor de bola branca, colocação até o momento perfeita, bola após bola. Forty two. Forty Chega finalmente aos 50 pontos e logo na altura que mais precisa. Provavelmente uh, Higgins só uh, deu a tacada de abertura na décima partida e vai ter que começar a virar o seu foco para a negra. Vermelha, bola de cor, vermelha e bola de cor. 
Ora, ou seja, uma já está. E agora, bola vermelha e bola preta. Isto, claro, se quiser jogar com a preta, também pode fazê-lo com a bola azul. Se puxasse, mas faria mais sentido jogar com a preta. E agora... Bola preta para ficar com 72 pontos de vantagem para... Apenas 67 na mesa, vamos ter negra contra todas as expectativas, até há, há pouco tempo. John Higgins era dono e senhor do marcador. Teve, aliás, por duas vezes o 6-2 nas mãos e agora, claro, é só um só frame para... Decidir, decidir quem se junta a Mark Selby na meia final. Deverá haver aqui também uma saudação especial se, quando o Ronnie fizer a centena de pontos. Bola azul serve. E a bola branca não é que tenha interesse, mas já agora a centena de pontos. Bola vermelha já não entra, mas vamos mesmo para o desempate na negra. 10 frames não foram suficientes para encontrarmos um vencedor. Tudo a decidir-se na 11ª partida. O... O formato dos encontros vai alterar-se significativamente para as meias finais e depois para a final, as meias finais que vão ser jogadas em duas sessões, à melhor de 19, 9 frames na primeira sessão e 10 possíveis na segunda, quem chegar aos 10 avança para a final, já a final também ela em duas sessões. 10 frames para serem jogados na primeira sessão da final e mais 11 possíveis. Selby, depois da vitória perante, perante uh, Joe Trump por 6-1, aguarda pacientemente por quem será o seu adversário da meia-final. Ali é o cumprimento entre ambos que rolem as bolas e, claro, que ganhe o melhor. Tacada de abertura uma vez mais para Ronnie O'Sullivan. Foi ele sempre quem abriu os frames ímpares e o seu adversário os frames pares. E deixa também uma bola longa, como tinha acontecido há pouco por parte de John Higgins, só que este sem sucesso. E atenção, bola preta, bola preta, bola vermelha e uh, pensei que pudesse jogar para a bola preta e depois para o mesmo lado, não a puxar, é uma enorme bola e claro, vem de, de, de todo aquele tempo de mesa de qualidade, daquela um, centena de pontos e John Higgins 
ali com um ar como quem, como quem diz que perdeu a grande oportunidade e agora é, está à mercê do inglês. A bola vermelha que qualquer coisa. Uma colocação de pormenor. E rapidamente vai evoluindo no marcador. Parece que guardou mesmo o melhor para o fim. Da forma como está o jogo. Higgins. Provavelmente irá cair mesmo nos quartos de final quando tudo a determinada altura apontava que iria seguir em frente. Só que um. Thirty six. Thirty seven. Tudo parece fácil e, e óbvio como é a panágio de do número um do ranking mundial. Seguir a branca aqui para o lado esquerdo. 45. E esta é a bola que muito provavelmente vai dar a vitória a Ronnie O'Sullivan. Precisava de, de um toque que corresse bem e é exatamente o que acontece daqui em diante. Não me parece que John Higgins possa regressar à mesa. Ainda teve a oportunidade com a bola vermelha, depois da tacada de abertura com a bola vermelha para, longa aqui para o canto inferior direito. Falhou uma vez mais e Ronnie em modo rocket. Eight. Bola azul, bola vermelha e bola de cor para a um, vitória no encontro. 64. Não tinha passado a barreira dos 50 pontos até à partida anterior, fez 100, agora já com 64 e a bola azul com bola de jogo. E encontro ficará com 70 pontos de vantagem para 67 na mesa. Mais uma vermelha para garantir. E John Higgins sairá acima de tudo. Não é pela derrota, é a forma como esta acontece. Sairá debilitado do, aqui de Xangai. Depois de ter uh, o encontro na, literalmente nas mãos. 
e vinha de um bom arranque de, de época com o European Masters, onde atingiu as meias finais, perdendo apenas para Judd Trump por 6-5, enquanto a Ronnie O'Sullivan faz aqui os primeiros dois encontros, eliminou Ali Carter por 6-3, agora o seu rival de sempre, John Higgins, por 6-5, e da forma como o fez, não é só o vencer. Uh, 5-2, houve ali uma altura quando uh, John Higgins uh, já levava 40 pontos com vermelhas e bola preta. Uh, houve ali uma altura que pareceu desmorecer, mesmo até porque olhava para o jogo e via que uh, muito provavelmente já não, não regressaria à mesa. Mas uma coisa é certa, daí em diante uh, acabou por cavalgar uh, nas... Uh, nos erros e nas frustrações que John Higgins foi sentindo à medida que via Ronnie O'Sullivan subir do seu rendimento. E a vida não é feita de, de se, se tivesse aproveitado ou não, o que é certo é que Ronnie manteve sempre ali alerta, com a, a vitó com a, sempre com o pensamento de que se algo correr mal estarei cá para apanhar os cacos e foi exatamente o que o, fe o, que o fez. E daí ser uma vitória mais do que justa. Não sempre ao longo de todo o encontro, onde claramente uh, acabou por uh, uh, não, não estar ao seu melhor, bem longe disso. Mas os campeões também se veem por, uh, por estes momentos. Quando corre bem é sempre mais fácil ganhar, é sempre mais difícil fazê-lo contra todas as adversidades e... Rocket passou no teste, passou no exame e está de parabéns por esta vitória suada, mas mais do que justa pelo que fez nas últimas partidas, sempre acreditando que só podia perder quando matematicamente já não fosse possível. É certo, Higgins acabou por fazer de, de, de Ronnie na primeira, uh, uh, de, nomeadamente a seguir ao intervalo da, da sessão. E depois daqueles 100 pontos, mais 130 para Ronnie O'Sullivan garantir aqui a vitória e manter-se invencível neste formato de uma prova de convite, como é esta do Shanghai Masters. Avança agora para o, as meias finais, onde vai encontrar pela frente Mark Selby, no encontro que será jogado a melhor de 19. Bem, e, e que jogão este John Higgins, claro que sai ali desiludido, com o que fez. Agora já está atualizado no frente a frente. 38 vitórias para 33 de, de John Higgins. E uh, presença.